Hello, I'm John Libra, and in this demo, which is quite interesting and technical, I want to show you how to use Informatica's Power Center to stage data into the Informatica Master Data Management staging tables. It, this is not the same demo as another demo that I have in which I show you how to land data. This is how to get landing data into the staging process of the MDM hub, which is a little bit more complex. Now the requirements are that you have MDM and Power Center installed and, and fully operational. This demo it requires MDM version 9.5 and up, but be careful, anything is subject to change in the future. So what I'm going to show you, it may have to be adjusted as you move on to other versions. So this is on 9.5 of MDM using 9.1 of Power Center. Now, it also assumes that you have already created landing tables and staging tables, and it does require a deeper knowledge of the staging tables structure, what, what columns are generated, what columns are required, etc., because we're going to have to provide all that information through a mapping. Also, it requires you that you have the Power Center custom transformation for the MDM part that we're doing for the staging. And then again, that you should know how to create mappings and workflows in Power Center, which you should know by now. So let's see. I'm going to go into the hub, and let me just tell you where what is it that I want to do. In the hub, we have landing data, and we create based objects that have staging tables in them. The idea is I've gone into customer and I have staging tables, and the idea is that I will populate the staging tables from the data in the landing tables. So you'll create various staging tables. Now I create a mapping object and let me just select the one that this is loading data from. So traditionally people use the hub to create mappings after they've created the landing tables, after they created the staging tables. And so they're going to create mappings to move data from the landing all the way to the staging table. Notice, notice that you need a P key source object you need a last update, and then your data, full name, customer. In this example, there's a conditional function as well as a cleanse list. Now, we're not supposed to go into all the details of a mapping. If you would like to know how to create a mapping, please feel free to take the full MDM hub course. And so this is a mapping that we normally do. What some customers want to do, they're saying, why do I need to do it this way? Why do I need to learn this way if I already have Power Center, etc.? So I'm going to show you how to solve that issue, that problem, using Power Center. So let me go to my schema, and let me just create a dummy staging table. Since all of these already work, I need to create one. I'm going to acquire a lock, and I'm going to create a staging table that you're going to see that I at the end I'm going to populate. This is going to be called STG just lack for a better name. I'm going to call it STG Sales Customer. So that'll be my landing table. There goes the physical name, STG Tam Sales Customer. And I know that I need to select full name and I need, oops, this is coming from the sales system. First of all, got to correct that. And customer class. The sales system will only provide full name and customer class. Full name is first name, last name, customer class, whether it is a person or an organization company. So there goes my staging table. At this point, I would normally now go ahead and go to mappings and start defining my mappings, but that's the solution I'm offering you where you bypass that step. So what I'm going to do is minimize this and I'm actually going to release the lock so I, I'm for so that I'm I'm guaranteed that I'm not touching it. And now we're ready. We're ready to create a mapping that will populate data from the landing onto the staging. But first, there's a few things and a few requirements that you've got to have. First of all, you've got to have, there's a, uh, there's a couple things you need. And where, when you bought Informatica MDM, and you've got to know where, you, where it is installed. In my case, is Info Admin under the hub. And under the resource kit, Informatica has given you something called PC MDM adapter. It is it is a, a new transformation, well, three transformations that Informatica MDM consultants have created. And so there's a jar file and 
It's something called the MDM Mapping Creator XML. The jar file has to be copied to the Power Center environment. And so I recommend that you read the notes on that. And the XML one is what we're gonna what we're gonna uh, use. So the MDM adapter, you quickly want to copy it to wherever Power Center is installed. I'm on, it's under Informatica, in this case 9.1. It is under server. And here under the server bin, I have already copied it since I've been using it. And you'll see that in in my in in my in in my bin Java lib directory, there it is. So that's a requirement. You've got to copy it right there. Uh, Power Center installation server bin Java lib directory, and that's what I have. Okay, the XML will be imported. So once I do that, also be careful. You must also configure and the environment level, whether it's Unix or Windows, you've got to configure the class path environment. So there's a special, you've got to just know that, that you've got to include, you've got to include, and let me just show you, uh, if you can just follow this, you've got to put, you've got to put all this into the, the class path of, of, of the definition of your environment variables. So again, if you don't know how to do that, you just got to make sure that you specify the full, the, uh, the, the JDBC drivers for Oracle. So you got to put that in the class path. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. That actually is what took me a while to get correct, and I've done it. So those are system requirements. And now what you do now is you go to, remember that I've created a brand new staging table. So now you go to Power Center, and under Dev01, I have created a mapping and what I did, I imported it. So there is that mapping that I told you that you import the mapping of DAC, the MDM mapping creator and this is what it creates. How did I do this? You go to imports and remember where I showed you, you go ahead and find it. You go ahead and find that XML file and it is where Informatica is installed. So I quickly go wherever Informatica is installed and I'm going to probably skip a few steps because I don't really that's not the focus of this these are system requirements so under Informatica MDM hub resource kit and under adapter all you've got to do is bring it in that's it when you bring it in this is what you end up with and you have this beautiful elegant mapping now this is a template generator it's a holding pattern it's going to have a landing to stage configuration definition file and it's going to have an environment parameters file so again these these two I'll show you in a moment but this is the secret this transformation here so let me just show you the transformation itself notice that there's a landing to stage details and an environment and this is what we're going to configure so essentially if you look at this it's we're going to configure the JDBC driver class the hub the DB user, the password, the hub user, everything that we would have to configure if we were doing the staging in the MDM hub. So all this is done for us if we're using the MDM hub since we're going to bypass it and we're going to land directly to staging data. We, uh, the developers, have to provide all this and at the end we're just going to uh, release it to a target file but essentially this MDM mapping creator is going to generate two other mappings for us and we'll see that. So this is the one we bring in and you do have to define the sources and targets and essentially as long as you know the names then you can call them whatever you want as long as you define them correctly. Let me show you what I call them. So remember this is coming from the Informatica Power Center directory so wherever Informatica is installed in the InfoShare directory you're going to, I created two files called landing staging details JL, my initials for John Lira, and I created an envir environment variable. Reading the user guide on this or the tech notes, you basically have to create a file called landing to staging details JL.txt, and you're going to provide these arguments the name of the landing table, the name of the staging table. Remember, I just created this again, STG Tem sales customer and then which is going to be the PK source of that mapping. Remember that if I don't do this, if I use the hub, I would have to create the mapping that assigns the last update date, 
the peaky source, any cleansing that I want. In my case, it's very straightforward. These are the three attributes, the landing to the staging and the peaky source is customer ID. So that's the file. Remember the name. It's uh, landing to staging details JL. And then the environment is actually a little bit more complex. If we edit this, you just got to follow the notes and specify exactly what you have. Here is the Java. And again, this is the the uh, pa the Java class, the JDBC uh, class for Oracle. And, and then also where my server is, where Oracle is installed. And I'm using InfoRCL. And then my ORS name. My ORS is TRN underscore lab. My password to my ORS. My username that I'm logging in is admin admin. And then the URL for the hub, info, server, etc. So again, you just got to specify all this. Those are the details. And assuming I did that correctly, and remember, there is a document for this. The document that you wanted for this, it's called the Informatica MDM multiple uh, MDM multi domain edition for Oracle, and it's the Power Center custom transformation for MDM. So I'm getting some of this information from a guide because uh, otherwise it would be a lot to remember. And assuming that the landing and configuration are correct, and again, trial and error, you might get things wrong. It took me a while to make sure that my at the Windows level my class path was set correctly, and I'll show you that point in a moment again. So once you have this fully defined, you will validate. And again, this is already valid. You will save. And then you need to create a workflow for this, which I have done already. So remember, I'm Dev04, and I have a workflow for this. And this, it's called WK, WKF, Landing to Stage. And you open it, make sure that it is the correct session that's running the mapping. And you go and configure it, the landing. The, remember the two definition files, the landing to stage? Well, here it is. Source, landing to stage, details, jl.txt. Then the environment. And that really took me the longest to do. Uh, again, ends in jl, environment, parameters, jl, text. And then the, res the targets are two of them. A resolve file, which is sort of, again, a dummy file. If something fails, it'll tell me error. But really what I want is the XML. That is the output that I want, which will become input. I will import it as two separate, uh, you'll see in a moment, as, as another mapping uh, with two transformations. And I'm going to call that XML LDG to STG stub XML. And I called it stub because you'll see that it's pretty much a, you'll see that it's pretty much a template for it. So assuming that I've done this correctly, I will refresh my mapping and I'm going to go ahead and run this even though I've already run this I'll go ahead and run this start workflow and you know that it's going to open up the monitor and in this moment here it's going to be running and that's the bottom one here and it'll run now I've already run this so I'm going to show you the output when uh, the output will be stored in the Info shared C colon info shared target files and here is the XML stub file. Let me make sure that it runs it because I actually gave it the same name. There it is. It's it's um it's still writing. And let me just give it a few more seconds. Because uh, I want to open it and of course I don't want to lock it. So here is the XML file and let me just show you. I'm going to show you the XML one dot out which is all exactly the same but without the without the conflict of the name and essentially this is an XML file that you'll see the results and we don't really have to study it we just have to know that the next step is to import this and let's see I think I have it already open come on it's edit with uh, okay Murphy's law all I'm doing all I'm trying to do is open it and come on can't take that long, can it? It's just a text file. Let me look and see what happened. Okay, there it is. There's, there's the file. Okay, now we're not going to take time to read this, but if you wanted to, you can see what the output is. 
it's much better for me to import it and show you what it, what it is that I have. So let me minimize all this. We don't need all that information. And going back to Power Center, what I'm going to do is log in as Developer 3 just to show you how I would import that. Now notice I've logged in to Developer 3 Connected and there's no mappings, nothing. So let me import it. So I'm going to import that mapping and I'll go get it. It's under the InfoShared target files and you'll see and there it is import and go ahead if there's any conflicts we have to resolve it and go ahead straightforward import it done and then since I'm working on a standalone file you'll see you'll see what what I have now notice the mapping is invalid the this was generated by the first mapping let me bring it out and the reason it's invalid because, as you know, it is not technically a valid power center mapping. What, what am I missing? Well, two things I'm missing is a target and a source, even if they're placeholders, even if they're to be dummies. It is, this cannot be a valid mapping, according to power center, unless I bring in a dummy source and a dummy target. And then what else, what else do you, what else can you do from the landing? This is the transformation from the landing table to the staging. In here, I'm going to delink these ports and add whatever cleansing, whatever transformation I want, and then compile it, and then I would be able to go ahead and run this. Now, this, this one I've already completed. So dev03 is a dummy folder. Let me go to dev02, and in here you'll see that I have already completed this. So let me so notice here's the I had to add a dummy landing and I just added the same one from before landing to staging and I added a dummy resolve file those are just placeholders in order to make it valid what I added and what's important is what I put under the fx so let me arrange all so you can quickly get a glimpse of this and again this is just a dummy source that I had to bring in I used I leveraged it from the previous mapping and a target so I won't spend time on those what we do want to see you do have to link it by the way as you know in order to be a valid power center mapping something must be linked to go it's just dummy it will never be used and also on the results you've got to connect at least one port so the run summary to the results but we're not going to read any data these mappings were generated by the first transformation remember that transformation that we created earlier uh, let me go to developer one just so that you here it is this transformation that read my two configurations created the XML I imported the XML and with that is with that is how I end up with this tra uh, mapping so let me just uh, make some more space here and what did I do well very simple cleansing this is what I would normally do in the MDM mappings but this is actually very very simple all I do all I do is bring customer name customer type and let's go inside and this is just a demo so customer name is an input I send it out as an output and all I do is r make it uppercase let me just show you I make it uppercase I trim it and that's it and then customer type I use the decode and if if the customer type is IND then set it to P for person. Otherwise, set it to O because it's an organization. So again, very trivial. I could have added more. I could have sorted data. I could have done whatever I need to do. But I just wanted to show you. There goes this very small. And like any other mapping, you must validate this. And what's next? We gotta create the workflow. So remember that I'm working under developer two. And in here, I have that workflow. And here is the mapping, the big one that I was just configuring. And notice under the, uh, under the mappings, these are just dummies, so I don't really have to set them. I, I actually set them to real uh, values, but they're not going to be used. And there's no connections. And all you do at this point is make sure that this is refresh in case we change the design. Validate. And we're almost done. 
I just got to run it now. So when I run this, when I run this, I'm going to start the workflow. And of course, monitor comes in. And I'll just show you that it is running. And while it's running, let me go back to the mappings and review a, a couple things. It is a complex solution. It is not easy. So remember how we started out. First, in developer 01, just to keep things separate, this is the XML that I imported. I configured the landing to staging detail files and the environment. That was a little bit hard. And then all I do is run this, and it produced an XML file. That XML file was brought into dev02, which is the one that I'm currently running. And let me open the mapping. Oops, I just want to, I don't want to copy it. Double click. Here it is. And let me arrange all so that you can see where you would troubleshoot this. So let me make some more room by expanding. And if you look at this first one, landing, from landing, uh, sales customer, if you double click and go to ports, you see the ports right there. But what's interesting is the initialization properties. All those, all those, the, the two parameter files, the two input files in the first mapping, here they go the settings. The landing table, the staging table, the hub connection, the user, the password, who am I logging in as into the hub, and where are my JDBC drivers. So I could change this. I could reuse this mapping if I, if I just, if I changed it, which is what I was doing earlier. And same thing for the other one called the staging to SDG sales. Again, that's it. So this, remember, those were the parameter files that were read in from those two files that I gave it. So remember, we have this file here. The parameter files okay so once I do that let me go to mapping and it has succeeded there it is so apparently it succeeded and now we just the only thing remaining now is validation how would I validate couple things probably easiest one is go to Oracle and I should see a staging table with data so I'm gonna go make sure that I refresh Remember, it's using the schema TRN underscore lab, which is the one we use in our classes. And I'll just refresh the tables. And the one that I'm looking for is, let me refresh. And again, it's a little bit slow right now, but then I have a lot of things going on. And I'm looking for the STG. So where is the C underscore STG? Almost. Here it is. And I call mine STG temp, C underscore STG temp. And somewhere in that, somewhere here it is. Notice, notice how complex this object is. I have the sales customers, but here's the PRL, the raw, and the reject. All that, all that is the same information that the power center mapping has to also take care of. So right now, I don't have delta detection or previously landing, so my configuration was quite easy. But in real life, you got to make uh, accommodations for that. So I refresh, and there goes my staging table with all my 84 records. Now, that's one way to validate. Let me go to the hub, and that's where I'm going to finish. So again, in the hub, I'm going to get a write lock. And remember, the staging table I had created, that's what I'm trying to populate. So if it worked out, there's a mapping that the power center mappings created. The power center workflow created this dummy one. It actually, it actually gave it the name called C underscore LDG sales. And you're never supposed to change this. The power center first mapping creates this, but it's a dummy placeholder. The second power center mapping is the one that executes this. So don't run the one that it was generated. We did not touch it. And you can look by the properties generated by Informatica's power center. Do not run directly in the hub. And then if that is my mapping, then I go to my batch viewer and I go to my stage jobs and there goes my stage job as if I had run it in MDM hub. I can see, I can see that it ran. I can see the records, etc. So I didn't do any of this here. The only thing I created was the landing table and the staging table. And I ran the power center mappings configured them, and imported the XML that was generated by the first one, and ran this, and it actually did all this. 
extremely good example of how you can actually do things out of the MDM hub. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, because some people consider that, that perhaps if you have Power Center or other solutions, you might want to do the staging there. So that now concludes our demo. And let me just go back. So there were two mappings that were created. This one here, this is the second one. That was the, the one, this is the one that I imported. And the one that started the whole game was this one right here. So again, very long detailed demo, quite technical. And this is John Lira, and I hope that you enjoy this demo. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.